Hello, my name's Pete Brown, and thanks for checking in on this one of four videos for the Beer 52 Master Beer Taster course, which Beer 52 asked me to help them put together. I was delighted to be asked to do this because I think the idea behind the course is, is really great. It's about showing the incredible diversity in beer. And while craft beer at the moment is one of the most exciting things the drinks world has ever experienced, if someone was to ask you uh, your, your 10 favorite beers, or if you were to go in a bar and, and look at the board, you'd see a load of amazing beers. But right at the time I'm doing this, well, the bars are closed at the time I'm doing this, but when the bars are open, uh, if you were to kind of um, get five great beers or 10 great beers, I'm guessing most of them would be pale ales, IPAs, maybe a few lagers, maybe the Imperial Stout. Now, there's nothing at all wrong with those beer styles. And we're going to cover quite a lot of those styles in the in the Beer 52 course because they, they deserve to be there. But it's quite a narrow perception of, of the full range of what beer is all about. So what we've done is we've taken four beer countries, uh, which have got real heritage in beer, uh, really the stars of, of the brewing world. And we've focused one individual box of beers on each country, and they are Belgium, Germany, the United uh, States, and the United Kingdom of Ireland. And for each one, I've written one of these little handy books, uh, which tells you a bit about the country, about why it's there, why, why we've chosen it as a, as a famous brewing country. And then we've got one of the boxes, which has uh, eight beers in uh, from that country. And again, it's not like we've said they're the best eight beers from that country. What we've done is said, what are eight beer styles that that country is particularly noted for? Um, there's so many different beer styles. The Americans think there's about 250. There aren't that many. They just get obsessed with numbers when they're, when they're doing judging. But there are a lot of different beer styles and they originate in different countries. Over history, they've cross-fertilized between different countries. Uh, so for example, if we look at America, uh, a lot of the inspiration of American craft beer movement were, was British ales uh, and now it's going the other way. British brewers now totally influenced by, by American beers. If you look at uh, Germany, perhaps less influence there coming into the country from elsewhere, apart from maybe the Czech Republic, uh, but German lager has gone to influence the entire world. And then Britain, British beers don't, don't get a very fair rap at the moment. They're, they're considered a bit dull and boring because they've been around for a while, but British and Belgian beers really interact uh, over the years and, and over the centuries to create and, and play different tunes with, with different styles. So we've got a video on each one of those countries. Uh, we're gonna start off with uh, possibly my personal favorite, which is Belgium. Uh, I've been a beer writer for about 20 years now and uh, Belgium is my favorite country to visit. Uh, it's just such a smorgasbord. I think you can characterize different um, different styles of brewing, different brewers and different breweries in different ways. Like we you know, think of crafts people, you might have a favorite craft brewery where people talk, talk about rock star brewers. That was a big phrase a few, a few years ago. Uh, you could think of brewing as a technical engineering process. You might know brewers who are, who are, who are, who are great artists even. I, I can think of a few brewers who I would describe as artists. If we think about brewing in Belgium, Belgium is the mad scientist of the brewing world and the, of the craft brewing world. Stuff that people would not even think about in other country, in other countries. Belgium have been doing it for years. And as a result, they've got probably a broader range of beer styles in terms of what goes into them, in terms of how they taste, than any other uh, country in the world. This is a country about the size and population of, of Wales and craft beer, as we know, it would not exist without Belgium, without Belgian brewing. And in the book, we go into a lot of detail about the about the history of that, about how and why it turned out the way it did. Uh, so I'm not going to try and summarize the whole book here. This video is just going to be uh, about five minutes long. But I thought I'd give you a flavor of, of what the case is uh, and what you can learn about the country and its brewing history and its brewing methods uh, as, as we go through it. So talking about those styles, um, this, in terms of choosing eight different beer styles, this was the hardest case to do because there are so many beer styles that could have gone into this. I, my, my first list was a dozen different, not just different beers, a dozen different beer styles that I wanted to include in this case. Styles of beer that you, you might be familiar with that originate from Belgium include a Saison, Triple, a Double, a Wit Beer, a Quad, Lambic, Gers, I mean, you name it, there's, there's so many. Um, and it's, and it's this variety, and it's the fact that they've been doing this for so bloody long uh, that, that makes it so fascinating. This really is where the modern, interesting, flavorful, interesting, different beer, uh, the revival of that, I guess you could call it, really dates back to. 
So I'm going to drink a couple uh, with you right now. If you've not got the box yet, hope that this will make you thirsty enough to, to go out and buy it. If you have got the box, then think of this as a, as a taster uh, for what's in it. Um, the two I've chosen, I could have chosen any two because they're all my favourites. I think what I'm going to go with first is uh, Saison de Pont. Now, uh, Saison, very familiar craft beer style. Every craft uh, brewing country in the world is brewing Saison. Uh, and most of them aren't Saisons. They're, they're kind of wannabe Saisons, but, but they're not really Saisons. Uh, Saison is a style that if you've come to it in the last few years, you probably think of it as something which is... Um, uh, quite spicy, probably got the, the herbs and spices added to it, uh, grains of paradise, peppers, um, di different kind of, um, you know, sort of Moroccan spices and things like that are often quite um, quite prevalent in saisons. We're now getting a lot of fruited saisons as well, apricot saisons, tangerine saisons or whatever. The, there are no fruit, no herbs, no spices in this beer. Uh, this beer is made with hops, barley, yeast and water, which are the four basic ingredients of beer. And this is the best saison in the world. I don't say many things that are absolute in the world of beer. I think most things are relative. I think most things are down to personal opinion, personal taste, personal preference. Fuck all that. This is the best saison in the world and I'll fight anyone who says different and I'm not alone I'm bringing mates so so why is it the best season in the world well it's the one everybody else tries to copy uh when everyone starts at, when people first started adding spices and things like that uh to saisons they were trying to replicate to some extent the incredible character this gets just from those four basic ingredients the history of saisons a bit murky um like a lot of beer uh it's definitely originated on uh, the farms of, of Western Belgium and kind of slipping over uh, into France a little bit. And the most popular story is it was, it was a kind of uh, light in alcohol, fresh summery drink uh, for farm workers to drink for refreshment, in much the same way that cider was used uh, for farm workers in, in the West of England uh, back through the centuries. That's been disputed a bit. There are some who say Saison was a strong beer designed for keeping. There are others who say it was really uh, fresh. Some say um, lots and lots of different stories behind it. But, but one thing that really characterizes it is that it has a, a mixed fermentation yeast. Uh, this is a yeast that gives it a natural spiciness. Yeast is an incredible uh, organism in, in what it adds to beer. It doesn't just turn sugar into alcohol. It adds flavor components of its own and the kind of wild semi semi domesticated yeast that Saison is brewed with adds flavor characteristics to beer that we don't get from most modern beer styles it's kind of a throwback to an age before microbiology when a lot of brewers cleaned up their yeast to get rid of these flavors and happily um Saison brewers didn't DuPont is one of the brewers down there that makes a Saison and it's generally regarded as the best Saison there is not just by me and immediately what you get on the nose, oh my God, it makes me want to be in Belgium. Oh, uh, the, the first, I mean, the first thing you get, I, I, I do struggle to kind of uh, break down flavors into individual components. I sometimes think that ruins it. Uh, so the first sniff I took there was, was just a real mix of spiciness, a real kind of um, funky, not sour or anything like that, but just kind of real funky, full, countryside uh, aromas and then a bit more closer I'm actually getting you know the thing about this is it changes on different days but but what I'm getting today is a, a, a gentle clove-like character kind of wheat grassiness and then it's so soft on the palate what, what I think is, is particularly wonderful in a lot of beers is there's 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 been a lot for as long as i've worked in beer there's a lot of people who think of uh you know beer is either easy drinking and therefore bland and doesn't taste of much it's cold fizzing you knock it back or it's complex and flavorful and that means you've really got to sip it and take your time over it a beer like this ticks both ends of that scale it's complex and flavorful it's also very very highly drinkable it's refreshing it's served cool you can see how people think it was brewed for a summer's day um but it just keeps going it's like it, it's like you can recognize it as the taste of a beer uh, maybe like a golden ale i mean it's a golden ale essentially um but just with extra layers on there like something else in there and that really is just coming from the yeast and this is a beer that just beguiles people uh year after year when you talk to beer writers have been around a lot longer than i have 
you know, you get things like American IPAs coming along, uh, you get real ale, you get all these different movements, you get people getting into sour beers, all this kind of thing. And you can go off and you can lose yourself in these different um, beer styles. And then you come back to a season and you go, oh, yes, I remember this. This is this is how it really, really, this is this is the stuff that really matters. The other one I'm going to serve and, and taste, because I can, because I've got these beers here, is uh, uh, Boone Gurs. Uh, Frank Bone is one of the legendary, uh, perhaps the legendary Lambic maker. He, he kind of re revived the style of Lambic and Gers beers. And it's from this Lambic Gers tradition that the modern craze for sour beers comes. And and it's this is a really interesting beer for making me think that sour is the wrong word for this entire for this entire beer style. It kind of misses the point. It's like calling it a wet beer or a or, a, you know, it's just like, well, yeah, it is, but that's not the point. Uh, it's not the word you would use to describe or differentiate it from other beers. Now, if you go to, to Belgium, if you go to Brussels, probably the most famous, the most hyped Lambic brewery uh, in Belgium is Cantillon in, in the centre of Brussels. And they're brilliant. They're really, really good at making no, no disparagement of them whatsoever. I've got a cellar full of Cantillon beers and I, and I love them. But it's very interesting when you go on the Cantillon brewery tour that you get shown the, the cool ship, the open fermentation vessel where the yeast gets into the beer. And uh, they don't really talk much about the barrel aging aspect of it. Frank Bone just talks all about the barrels. For him, his beer is made in the barrel. And so he blends the beer, it ages, and he blends it in the barrels. And the barrel is part of the character of the beer, as well as the yeast, as, as well as the age, as well as the, all the different microorganisms in there. And this just has a, oh my God, that's like, um, that's like uh, it, it's geraniums and uh, carnations, a lot of floral stuff. And then at that kind of, the, the, the character from Britannomonas is kind of dry mustiness, but at a very low level and it mixes in with everything else. So it's, it's, it's really pleasant. A kind of like a lemon sherbet-y thing as well. Uh, And the reason we think of these beers as sour is the first impression you get on the palate there is this acidity. And I think acidity is more a more useful word than sourness. Um, you, you get acidity on the sides of your tongue and the sides of my tongue immediately kind of, my mouth started watering as, as soon as I drank that. Um, but it's a similar kind of acidity to what you'd get in a really sharp, say a, a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. You would never call a sharp acidic Sauvignon Blanc, a sour wine. It's, it's not, it's the wrong word for it. Sour is a, is a phrase, is a taste that we tend not to like. Instead, think of it as, as sharp, as citrusy, um, as, as, as acidic, and, and, it, and it describes the flavor actually much better. Mm. And when Lambics were first rediscovered, they were kind of going out of, uh, existence in the 1970s and Frank Bone uh, was uh, the person who worked harder than anybody else to, to revive them as a style in Belgium and Michael Jackson the beer writer who passed away in 2007 really kind of was the person to, to take this style and go uh, this is amazing this is not like any other beer you've tasted um, and, and he was the person who championed these beers uh, outside Belgium for the first time and he thought of this as a real champagne of beer uh, and I can see what he means it's it's that's got that same spritziness that moosiness um uh, and and that crispness to it that a good champagne has so um two very different beers and they're just two of the eight beers in this box uh and when you drink them all all each one a different style as i say you really get a sense of just what a experimental playground uh, belgium is so uh, if you haven't bought the box, I hope this tempts you into it. Uh, if you have, I hope this gives you a little bit uh, more deeper background uh, as to why I felt it was uh, such a great country to feature and such a wonderful and pleasurable box to put together. I hope you enjoy drinking these beers just as much as I did. Cheers. <laughs>